on this episode of Real Screaming Kayaks, we have New Zealand destination Mangawai Heads, where Paul MacGyver and I go exploring Bring Tail. Plus, we go over the finer points of bar crossings. In Equipment Workshop, we look at rod and reel care. In the Understanding Fish Finder section, we have a special feature on my latest addition to the kayak, which is the Hummingbird Helix 9 Gen 2 Mega. In our new Cook and Catch feature, we look at ways to prepare and do raw fish. Plus, there's also a fishing technique winter special targeting gurnard on soft baits. All this and more coming up on Real Screaming Kayaks Episode 9. With this fish, and it's off! Screaming! How's it going? New Zealand destination, we're off on another mission. This time, Mangawai. Let's go. Yeehaw! Go, man. Located in the upper parts of New Zealand's North Island, Mangawai is one of those little hidden gems you find, like many others, tucked away and just off the main highway. Super excited about going fishing out there. It's going to be, you know, this is Paulie's country. We've got Paul MacGyver again with us this time. Hello. And we're heading to Mangawai. And uh, this is Paul's home little patch. He knows this area, so all the pressure's on him for this trip. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the caravan, chill out, see what we can find in the shallows around Bream Tail this week. Awesome. Can't wait, man. Can't wait to head out there. New country for me, haven't really fished off Mangawai. Been further out, spear fishing out at the Hen and Chicks, which is, um, Mangawai is kind of like the gateway to um, that sort of area and all that bream head area. So, really excited. Yeehaw, fish on. Hey bro, we made it to Mangawai Heads. Yeah, check it out, Mangawai Heads, wicked looking spot. Good swell out there at the moment though, but hopefully <laughs> yeah. that's going to drop away tomorrow, eh? I hope so, brother. We're going kayaking in that tomorrow. Let's hope this drops away, which it's supposed to do, so, you know, it is what it is tomorrow, but we're going to head out through that bar over there. It's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, mate, we'll head out around the corner, follow the, follow the deep yep. out there and head right around, the, hug, hug that rock. Yeah, and um, best to go out on an outgoing tide, hey Paul? Yeah. Nice. That's, that's the good thing about our timing here, the tides are just spot on. It is quite yeah. a tidal place, eh? So yeah. you don't want to be paddling, or peddling in your case, Yeah. against those tides. No, nah, definitely not. I mean, even paddling as well will just be a struggle. After checking out the bar up high on the northern side, we proceeded to head down to the estuary area and check out the entrance on the other side. Bawley, so here we are mate. Your home, little holiday home away from home. Yeah mate. Mangawai yeah, Heads. Uh, up here in Mangawai Heads, my local garden patch. Hopefully um, find a spot, sneak out through these uh, big waves that are cranking through the bar from a nor'easterly swell. It's us tomorrow, eh? It's us tomorrow. The swell's dying down, and uh, we're going to sneak out out here and see what we can pull out of the bream tail. Should be good. Some nice little, um, some fantastic weed beds in that up there, eh? Good shelf, seal colony, and um, hopefully we can 
catch some food. So what does Mungify stand for, Polly? You, you got the um, handle on that? According to um, local legend, bro, Mungify is, um, I think, um, stingray water. You know, so it's the home of the stingray, and the ray up here is was well respected from the locals. And um, yeah, there's some big ones in here, eh? Paddle around in the estuary, coming across a few biggies. There's heaps of them. Occasionally, the, the killer whales come through this little channel here, and up in the bay, and, and come chasing them, eh? That's spectacular when you see them in a little uh, inlet like this. Yeah, that'd be amazing to see, I reckon, eh? Yeah, man, it's a cool awesome. little spot. Cool, cool place, can't wait to explore it. June's across here, a little um, dotal breeding ground. Mangawai Harbour is mostly estuary, with sand and mud flaps available that hold kawai and the odd flounder. It's a great place to explore as well, especially when waters outside the harbour are too rough for kayaking and you can certainly explore and discover plenty of things around the harbour including sand dunes. Its waters are often sheltered yet the tidal flow that happens here needs extreme caution when looking at getting out into the open ocean we call the Pacific. When looking to head out what is essentially a bar crossing it's important to do your homework before attempting it. You can see eh, when the tide starts turning here though the current definitely hones through to get a free ride out. Yeah I bet it looks um... It's hard to paddle against though so you've really got to pick your times in places like this. Make sure you paddle with the tides and don't try and fight it because it can be pretty dangerous coming in over the bar fighting the tide. Sometimes you can uh, just not go anywhere man and that's pretty scary. Yeah, safety first day when it comes to places like this, definitely. Definitely, we've gone and had a recon and, and sussed it out and we'll go tomorrow when the swell dies down and pick our spots. And also, you know, going with the tide either way too, isn't it? You know, we've got the outgoing tide in the morning and then low tide middle of the day, sort of one o'clock and incoming for the afternoon, which is crucial to coming back as well. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier, man, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So how would you, you know, being the local here, Paul, and looking at what we've got behind us there, how would, what's your sort of approach with that kind of stuff, you know, with the outlet there? I um, generally will go out when there's a little bit more water in here, eh? So tomorrow morning we'll leave early and the flow will be um, a bit higher over some of the rocks out the back of this head rock here. But you, you generally head out from head rock stick to the left and uh, work your way around. There's a couple of little flat um, low-lying rocks out in front of it so uh, you just dark in between those and, and you're away. But I uh, always hang left out here, right? Eh? Yeah. yeah, you can see the calm side but you can also see too it's crucial with your timing isn't it Paul, you know? That Especially is. the appearance of waves, you know? Yeah, you can see um, the channel's pretty narrow here at the moment and there's, um, when the current runs, the pressure waves in there, there's, a, there's a quite a lot of water flying out, so. Yeah. That'll just suck the nose of your kayak in if you're not careful. Yeah, and especially um, with the height of the water too, the thinner it gets, the more it rushes, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, well. Fun though, mate. Yeah. Do it right and do it safe and you'll get through the scenario with no problem. Always go have a look first. Yeah, case out the area that you intend to use as your exit from into the open water. After making a successful bar crossing in what can only be described as near perfect conditions, Paul and I headed north to Breamtail. We started fishing where the pastures turned to bush 
and was soon into some pan-sized snapper. A massive workup nearby quickly drew our attention away from the snapper and it wasn't long before we were sitting in amongst the birds. Sitting amongst the diving gannets, terns and sooty shearwater is an exciting experience. With plenty of bait fish showing up on the sounder, we were ever hopeful of catching that big one. Yet, all that was here was slimy mackerel and mackerel. Determined to find that one predatory fish hanging around these bait schools, we stuck it out for a wee while longer, but it was to no avail. On the way back into the coast where we were fishing earlier, I spotted some sign on the fish finder. So I dropped the jig down on it and soon hooked up. Nice. It looks like one for the bin. It, it is definitely a fish for the bin, mate. Yeah, happy with that. We've got, we've got a few, few mouths to feed today, haven't we, bro? So, you know. Right, it's come up still pretty feisty, actually. So, yeah, we'll give him a bit of a... Is that on your slow J? Yeah, on the slow J, bro, the green one. Yeah, mate, yeah, that, yeah. that does the damage, eh? Yeah. It's a good panty snapper, about 40 centimetres. So, yeah. Take the boo. Not unhappy with that. For the next few hours, Paul and I enjoyed plenty of fish, including snapper and the odd kawai as well. You certainly can't beat a good kahawai on light tackle and they'll always give a good scrap right to the side of the kayak. They would have to be one of the most underrated fish and when bled and prepared properly they make excellent eating. With plenty of smaller snapper caught and released the signs were good for this area and the future of fishing. Using the fish finder to locate the concentrations of snapper soon paid off, with both of us putting a good feed of snapper in the rear well to take home. Still the biggest snapper eluded us, until the local lad showed us just what kind of potential this location has to offer. I just watched Paulie get absolutely towed off and this fish did a big run on him. Looks like a real goodie. Finally we see some action. Good fish, eh Paul? Oh yeah, beauty. Very nice mate. Got to be happy with that, eh? I am happy as. Well hey, about time we saw some uh, better ones, eh? Yeah man, they're always here. Yep, bit of a slower start to the morning but we could actually end up with some good fish this afternoon, eh? I oh, mate, my, my, my numbers are increasing, you know. This is number four in the bin. Excellent. Nice fish, bro. Thanks, mate. During the afternoon, the wind picked up, and with it came the odd patch yeah, of rain. Nice the fish number. didn't care, though, and consistently stayed on the bite until the promise of new species had us travel south. So I've just taken Rob for a stop at my local garden patch, do some weeding. Generally gets uh, infested with carrots this, all year round. And here I've, I've pulled one up so far and just let and see if we can get Rob on a couple of carrots, it'd be good. But um, yeah, this is my garden. Moving back up for another drift had me hooked up within a minute on what looked to be a nice carrot. Grabbed my soft bait and I'm really happy because this is a great gurnet. Hey, yeah. doing the weeding in the garden, oh, brother. God. The weeding in the garden. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, man, that's Check awesome. Check that out, and that's a good gurnet, too. Yeah, they're, they're pretty healthy, eh? Yeah, so there we go. I caught that on that nuclear chicken jigging shrimp. 
that. And um, he won't let go of it now, but you can see it there. And I'm stoked. Look at that. Nice fatty. What followed this was a steady stream of gurnard coming in on the same soft bait. I was really enjoying catching this species of fish, especially because it was something different. Not only do gurnard taste great, but also have a very colourful display on their fins. The new Berkeley Gulk Jigging Shrimp Nuclear Chicken was proving to be extremely deadly on this kind of fish. So another couple of drifts and we soon had all the carrots we needed from Paul's garden. With our fishing fix satisfied, it was soon time to head back into the estuary. Our timing was perfect for coming back through the bar and once again it was easy. The reason for success is because of good planning and preparation. On this episode of Equipment Workshop, we're going to look at the options for aftercare on your rods and reels when you've been out for a trip and you've come back and what to do to look after them. So there's a few things that you'll need to do this. One, you'll need some solution like salt away. I mix up my own, so you'll need a couple of spray bottles. One for your salt away solution that you'll pre-make or you can buy it ready made, but this is a better option, especially if you want to get long term use out of it. And then you'll need another spray bottle that's going to have lukewarm water in it. On top of those, you'll also need some spray lubricant for afterwards. This one here that I've got is Pro EPT from Wholesale Marine Direct. Great product, safe to use, and that's the important thing when you're selecting products to put on your reels once you clean them down is use products that are safe and all these products that I'm showing you here are completely safe to use on braid line and your guides and your rods and all your components and lures etc. Before we um, look at what to do when cleaning our reels up after going out for a fish one thing that you should never do is use the hose to wash your reels down. By using high pressure water you're actually driving salt into the reel and also driving more water into it. So basically, always avoid cold, fresh, high pressure water when cleaning your reels. So to start with, when you come back from the shore and you get back home, you want to treat your reels. So in the case of this one, which is a spin reel, Tighten up your drag and do that with all your reels. Tighten up your drag, make sure everything's tight and then basically give them the reel a nice fine spray of the salt away solution and coat it thoroughly. Do the same for your guides as well. Do all your guides because sometimes what happens is while you're fighting a fish the tip of the rod can go down into the water and when that happens you're getting salt on those guides so it's important to spray those as well in the case of the overhead reel we have here same thing do up your drag tight and then spraying a good coat all over the reel so the idea behind putting the salt away on your reel and your guides is it sits on there for a minute or two and basically works to dissolve any salt that's sitting there so once you've sprayed your reels and your guides and everything with the salt away solution then leave them to sit for a minute and while you're doing that go off and fill up your second bottle with some lukewarm water. Now after letting them sit for a minute or two take your lukewarm fresh water 
and spray a nice mist coat over the entire reel and also your guides and everything that way you'll be rinsing off any salt away solution that's on there so basically now that you've sprayed your reel and your guides down with the fresh lukewarm water spin it dry loosen the drag off hang the rod vertically and then proceed to spin your reel so you're kind of spinning it dry then put your rods so they're sitting vertically on a surface and that way your reel can drip dry the remaining and get rid of the remaining water that's left on the reel and do the same with all your rods and reels let them sit vertically so that any water can drain out of them properly and they can dry off fully once you've allowed them plenty of time to dry it's time to finish them off make sure first of all though they're dried thoroughly you can wipe them down with a clean cloth as well whatever you like but to finish off this is really good especially if you're storing them away for some time and that is grab your marine lubricant and spray a coat on the outside of the reel when spraying the lubricant be sure to only apply a nice fine mist coat on the exterior surfaces don't soak it in and push this lubricant into the reel you don't want it going inside into the internal parts where it can break down any grease or oil that's in there for the working parts of the reel lastly before you store your reels away be sure to always loosen off your drags that way your drag washers won't be compressed over a long period of time and then when it comes to use the reel they will be fully operational and, good sh and in good shape This episode features my Hummingbird Helix 9 Gen 2 Mega. The recent addition of my new Hummingbird Helix 9 Mega Imaging has given me a whole lot of new options to bring you the latest technology available on the market. What this means is that in future episodes I'm going to be able to bring you live video footage of what's actually happening on screen. It also allows me to show you other things like how to adjust your unit and play with settings, zoom in on different features and functions and also the various options to allow you to read your fish finder better. With the unit offering way more power than previous versions, the images you can see on screen here are some of the first that I've captured while out on the water and to be honest it's just stunning. The clarity and vision are far above anything else available right now. So keep an eye out for future episodes where we will show you what this powerful new unit from Hummingbird has to offer. For more information visit the website. This time we're going to look at an effective way of preparing raw fish. Tataki sauce is an effective method and can be used as a dipping sauce or as a marinade with species like kawai, kingfish, trevally and tuna ideal. First you'll need to prepare the fish and this is done by patting it completely dry with a paper towel before proceeding to cut up. In our case we're going to marinate it so we're going to cut it into two and a half centimeter cubes. With the fish prepared and ready to go now it's time to gather all our ingredients for the sauce. The following will make enough sauce for two fillets of kawai or a couple of loins of kingfish or tuna. You'll need onion, lemon juice, soya sauce, sesame oil, olive oil, sugar and wasabi. Start by finely chopping one tablespoon of onion. Now grab a bowl large enough for all the sauce ingredients and add two tablespoons of soya sauce. You can either use light soya sauce or dark. I'm using dark soya sauce for a more rich flavor. Squeeze some fresh lemons and then add three tablespoons to the mix. Now add one tablespoon of sugar followed by 
two tablespoons of sesame oil and one tablespoon of olive oil. Add wasabi to taste and as a general guide use about one teaspoon or more depending on how much hot spice you prefer. Finally add the onion then thoroughly mix all the ingredients together until you have a nice consistent sauce. Let the tataki sauce sit for 5 minutes before pouring over the fish. Combine the sauce and fish well, then cover with cling film and allow to sit for 3 hours minimum in the fridge. To serve, mix enough tataki fish with cubed avocado and red capsicum. Then garnish with coriander. And that's our tataki fish ready to eat. So as far as the technique for catching gurnard goes, it's more of a drag the soft bait along the sand and cast in front of the drift and work it back. You know, you want to be hanging the soft bait way out, away from the drift. We're drifting this way and the soft baits that way. So we're just basically letting it sit on the sand and drag along as it goes. It also pays to occasionally feed a little bit of line off your reel. That way you'll get a massive angle right out past the kayak and that helps the gurnard to pursue and chase the soft bait. When a gurnard shows some interest in your soft bait, you'll start to feel the normal signs of a fish pecking at your bait. In this situation, sometimes they can be difficult to hook up or lose interest in your soft bait. So the best thing you can do is actually give it a bit of erratic action by twitching the rod tip plenty of times to make the soft bait move around. This fires the gurnard up even more and causes them to chase the soft bait further. It also keeps them interested and from here, the best thing you can do is keep the rod tip still and wait for them to take some more pecks at the bait. If they lose interest, be prepared to give the rod tip some more twitches. Then keep still again and wait for some more interest to be shown. It's best to stay focused by always watching what's happening down the line. And when some interest is shown, react by striking at the fish. Once connected, Strike a few more times to set the hook and that way it will keep that gurnard on the line. The trickiest part about hooking the gurnard is actually striking at the optimum time and this is generally when the fish has a bite at your soft bait. Take your time when playing the fish out, bring it up slowly and be sure to keep a constant pressure on the line. Doing so will ensure it stays on the hook and in turn provide you with a nice feed. Special thanks to our sponsors. Outdoor Sports New Zealand provide the Old Town Kayaks and Ocean Kayak that get us to the action. Humminbird provides the technology that finds the fish. Railblazer customises our kayaks. Sharkskin protects the body against the elements. Neptune assists with the free diving and Pelage captures the seafood. Jigstar rods fight the fish and zest jigs attract the fish. Yeah.